and glorious couch. You can shuffle up. Shuffle, shuffle up, gang. There you go. Shuffling. Every way. day <laughs> we're shuffling. That's what us yeah. That's what us <laughs> Brits say, isn't it? Um, now, you two, you, you know each other very well. You've worked together not once but twice. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, indeed. What did you work together uh, on? Well, we had, I had the great privilege of casting Lily in Cinderella. Yes. Um, <laughs> In which you did a, a fantastic job, and it was it was uh, it was a wonderful experience. It yeah. really was. And then you did a play. We did Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. Romeo and Juliet in the West End. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard Madden. Richard Correct. Madden yes. was also Prince Charming. Yes, that's mm. right. He that's was right. Prince Charming and Romeo, mm -hmm. and you were Juliet and Cinderella. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was why you cast him because you'd worked together on Cinderella. Because I always felt like I was sort of overlooked for Romeo. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. No. I think you weren't no, available. When I heard about it, I was like, well, the call must be coming. Well, I was incredibly disappointed, yeah. too. Yeah, I'm overlooked and... for DiCaprio. It's well... got to come around at some point. <laughs> but, uh, Lily, uh, when, when Kenneth directed you in Cinderella, is this right that Kenneth called you personally to tell you that you got the role, which isn't always what happens that the director calls No, you. do you remember this? I remember where I was. Where were you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, was, I was filming. I was in, at, doing Downton Abbey, and it, we film in the English countryside where there is, like, no, no service. Mother. It's a yeah. nightmare. It's just sheep and, you know... Mud. Mud. Yes. <laughs> and so I was in my three-way trailer, and I got a call saying, Ken, you know, Kenneth Brown's going to call you, and I'm thinking, oh, God, well, if he's calling me, he must be telling me thank you so much, but it didn't go your way, because that's personal, but if you get it, your agent tells you... And you called me. <laughs> my heart has never beat more far to my life. And you called me and you went, hello, it's Kenneth Brown. Uh, <laughs> now, I just wanted to call to tell you, beep, beep, oh, beep. No. <laughs> <laughs> and my, the service went and I was running around these fields going, ah! Oh. Um, finally, I got signal and you told me and, oh. It was just one of the happiest. Uh, it was a lovely thing. I was in a, a hotel bathroom. It's the only place I could get signal. So right. I was doing that and going up and down and trying to wow. get the signal here and thinking it was me. Oh. So that was kind of... No, you have got the partner. That's not <laughs> no, really... I have, I have. Terrific. terrific. Yeah. <laughs> so did you say have or haven't? Yeah. I didn't... Be yeah, exactly. clearer. Is this something you often do, Ken? Did you often think... Because do you think that comes from you being an actor and knowing what it's like? on the receiving end of those calls that you think, well, these, those are the great moments, I imagine, being yeah. a director. Well, they are, you know, and they're kind of, not to sort of overburden it, but they're kind of life-changing yeah. moments. I remember being in a room at Marvel Studios with Kevin Feige on the Saturday morning, I remember, mm. between 9 and 10, when finally, having circled a, a table for an hour, we decided we're going to call Chris Hemsworth. Wow. We're going to call Tom Hiddleston, and he will be Thor, and he will be Loki. Again, overlooks. Overlooks. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I tried you. I tried you. I had no service. I had no service. It's when you were in England. Now, I really want to talk uh, about Belfast because... Oh, thank you. I think it's the most extraordinary film. Me too. Nominated this morning for six BAFTAs. I know that this is an, an unbelievably personal uh, project for you. How does it feel in this moment right now to have something that means so much to you to be received in this manner. Has it caught you off guard at all? Most, I'm mostly a, a weeping wreck, actually, at, at various times. It's a very personal story. It's very much inspired by things that happened to my family. And, and, and what's been beautiful is that it seems that other families and other people who were young and had a moment where they had to sort of assume adulthood in, in quite sort of mm. challenging ways, people recognise that. They recognise a certain kind of migrant story. And for me and my family and, you know, the people I know back in Belfast, where I come from, it's been a source of great pride. So what it would... What it does is it exposes you a bit, but that's part of why I did it, and it makes you very, uh, it makes you very emotional. Yeah, I would say. I find the whole thing incredibly emotional. I'm, yeah. I hope, and I'm touch wood, and I feel so certain that you are going to be in that conversation for Academy Awards. Obviously, you've been nominated <laughs> well, thank you. five thank times. You. Thank you. Five times you've been nominated at the Oscars before. Do, do you think? How much do you think about winning? What do you think about <laughs> award ceremonies? Do you fantasize about? Winning one of those what, gold men. I mean, it's unbelievably exciting. If you see the film, you know how far I came to be sitting on this sofa opposite mm -hmm. you. And uh, so it's, that's kind of unbelievable and incredible, and, it, and it's fantastic. But an Irish thing is not to get too carried away with that. Yes. You know, there's a minister in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the film that is very stern and fire and brimstone -y, and I always hear that kind of voice if you ever even, you know, remotely got ahead of yourself mm. and were kind of practising in the mirror. I think that's the moment when a lightning bolt would strike you, you know, <laughs> so I try and avoid that. I it's a find... thrill to be in the conversation. Mm. Well, it is, except I, I always find award shows is like it, well, the, the start of award shows are incredibly exciting and then as the night goes on it just becomes <laughs> a night of losers 
Because yeah, one person wins and four people lose. So at the start of the night, everyone's like, ah! Yeah. Halfway through, people are like, Pfft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big and I, yeah. Yeah, because 80% of the people go away empty-handed. Yeah, and and that's just... the, which is why you can't think too much about winning, just being in the conversation. They're all winners. Exactly. exactly. I mean, <laughs> you've been on your fair share of, of red carpets, huge events, such as your life right now. Are, are they always as glamorous as they look? Do you find them to be glamorous times? I mean, they're never, ever as glamorous as they look. Usually quite the opposite. I had, <laughs> I had a funny awful experience. Um, <laughs> Don't look at me when you say no, that. No, I'm telling you because, again, it's to do with Cinderella and we were at Berlin. It was the Berlin Film Festival and again, it was like the biggest night of my life. I'm in Pink Dior Diamonds. You're there. Kate Blanchett's there. We're all getting ready to go. But at the same time, I just have a really bad um, <clears throat> urine infection. Oh. Yeah, which anyone oh. knows. The Cinderella story yeah. so rarely told. I mean, I'm regretting this. <laughs> when the clock strikes 12, <laughs> something happens. You will need a cranberry juice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so we're getting, I'm feeling amazing, but I'm also in a little bit of pain. And we get in these black limos. It's a convoy of limos. We're heading to the carpet. And it got to the point where I was like, I can't take it anymore. So I, I exit the line of limos, head to a sort of petrol station, a German petrol station, go into this, the most disgusting toilet I've ever seen in my life. I've got my Dior dress on. And I'm thinking, oh, my thinking, God. Oh, this is just the, now the worst day of my life. Anyway, get back there, get back to the carpet, and suddenly it's like... <laughs> wow, it's that's just, quite, quite amazing to think that at the moment you were at the world premiere of Cinderella, <laughs> just 20 minutes earlier, you were in a gas station, station yeah, the toilet the in place. agony. <laughs> wow, talk about a true Cinderella moment. Yeah, that really is actually, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> now, Kenneth, we talked about Belfast, but you're actually here for your other incredible film, the, arguably the most prolific man on planet Earth, which is Death on the Nile. You've directed the film, <laughs> you star in the movie. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what this what this one's about. Death on the Nile uh, is another story from Agatha Christie uh, featuring the, the Belgian detective Hercule Poirot. Mm -hmm. And he is in Egypt and part of a wedding party arranged by two newlyweds, uh, Lynette Ridgway, famous heiress, and Simon Doyle. They bring all their friends, but... Alas, early on in this very glamorous trip to this amazing location with the pyramids and the Great Nile and the wonderful boat, the Karnak, it's an Agatha Christie story, so somebody loses their life uh, very violently early on in the story, and uh, it's on the boat, so it can only be somebody who's on the boat. Mm. So, yes. And so the whodunit that she's so delicious about uh, presenting Agatha Christie uh, spreads out from there. And it's the usual dazzling array of characters. We've got a fantastic cast. And uh, you get to, as it were, feel as though you're on an e Egyptian holiday without having to find a murderer. <laughs> Do you ever think wait. about... This is your second... Poirot movie, is that right? That's Second, right, yeah. it is. Do you yeah. ever think about doing a Poirot movie where he just goes on holiday and has <laughs> a nice time? Oh, that would not be... <laughs> Do you think that would be an interesting <laughs> twist? If you call it, like, you know, death on a... <laughs> death, death in New York, <laughs> but actually he's just having a great time. I think... I think, I think it's a great... Takes I think in a couple of that. shows, he would brunches. Love, exactly, Like yeah. Sex in the City, but yeah. with Poirot. Yeah, exactly. You should be in that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See some friends, you know, has coffee, talk, talks about stuff, you know. No one dies. Yeah, Nothing no one really dies. bad happens, no and you can have dies. really good moments where, like, oh, like, like a, something's going <laughs> to fall they over, it. and they just miss it, and you're like, oh, it just carries on. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's an all-star cast in the movie, uh, incredible cast. Something you organised dinners and game nights with the cast. Are they a competitive bunch? Who oh, was the but... most competitive on, on the movie? Uh, well, Gal Gadot is really quite uh, yes. competitive. Mm. Uh, Annette Benning is also mm. very competitive, also very, very good. Very good organiser, Annette Benning. You need somebody who's a kind of host, don't you? Yes. You need somebody who a gets... Galvanizer. It all... Yeah, and also gets all the pieces of paper, <laughs> gets all the pencils ready right. for that kind of thing, gets the post-its to push the thing on go. your oh, forehead. Oh, wow. Like the name of the thing. Oh, this sounds I like a blast. Word. They're all quite organised, you know, and also gets the cocktails organised. Because, of course, if you do a film where you're all trapped somewhere, like on a train mm. or on a boat, then, then suddenly you feel we might as well be trapped in the evening play, playing games. Mm. Oh. So give me the post-its and the martini. Sounds, Sounds like a joy, as is the film.